This is for my best friend because I know she's gonna watch this. Three years ago, I painted this for another one of my friends and ever since then, my best friend, Nina, has always been asking me to paint her or draw her or just do something artistic with her face. But I didn't draw or paint her until now, after three years. Oops. It's not that I didn't want to draw her or didn't have time. It's more like I just didn't really have a good idea of how to draw her and capture her personality the best way that I could. So Ina makes this kind of peacock sound when she's happy. You can't force her to do it, she kind of just does it. I don't really know how to explain it, but just trust me that it sounds kind of like a peacock. With that in mind, I decided that I could probably use peacock feathers as a sort of inspiration for how to paint or draw her. Especially because peacocks are so pretty and so like badass, I thought it would just really suit her too, besides the reference to the little sound that she made. So a few weeks ago, I painted Hua Hua, my mom's idol. And for that painting, I used mixed media paper and used pencil crayon and paint. And I really like how that turned out, so I decided to do the same thing for my best friend, Nina. So for reference photos, I first searched for a peacock crown to give me an idea of how to use peacock feathers. Then afterwards, I searched for a picture of peacock feathers so that I could have close up on what peacock feathers look like so that I could paint them accurately. And for a reference photo of Ina, I just used the Snapchat that I saved over the course of three years. And it probably sounds really creepy that I screenshotted the Snapchat that she sent me. But ever since she asked me to paint her, I started saving some photos of her so that I could have some reference photos of her so that I would be prepared when I actually have an idea of how to present her as the queen that she is. I didn't know if I could find a photo of the position that I wanted online and I felt like I would just waste a lot of time trying to find the perfect reference photo online. So what I ended up doing was using myself as reference, aka posing somewhat self-indulgently so that I could get the perfect photo of a hand position that I wanted to draw her with and I'll just roll the clip. It's kind of disgusting to watch for me because it just feels so awkward. After I got all of my photos, I got my paper, and then my setup, all set up, and then I started drawing. When I first started drawing, I made her a little bit too chubby, and I think it was because in the pictures that I have of her, half of them are of her with a dog filter, and with the dog filter, I don't know what exactly it does to your face, but I think it does make your face a little bit chubbier, because it's a dog filter, and dogs are like cute and chubby, so I had to slim down her face a bit. And it was the same thing for the eyes too, where I made her eyes a little bit too big so I had to fix that and make them smaller. So I really should have planned ahead more but I kind of just came up with an idea of what to do with the headdress picture that I found as I was drawing. So what I ended up deciding to do was to draw a sort of metal wire around her head and then I decided to also draw these elongated twisted metal pieces coming off from the back of her head to really accentuate and create a really elaborate piece because she is queen. I basically just did a modified version of a peacock crown that I used as a reference photo. And I decided that the peacock feathers could go around her head like this so that it'll fan around her and it'll look really cool. And for the hand position, I really chose a hard hand position by choosing to pose in that way. But first of all, I really wanted to challenge myself. And second of all, I feel like it's a really good hand position to showcase that she's a queen. I don't know. <laughs> it just seemed like a good idea at the time. But then when I was actually drawing it, I was just cursing at my past self for deciding to do that to my future self. But my future self in that time was also my is my past self now. Anyways, the hand position was hard but it's not as hard as drawing teeth because it was so difficult to draw i actually took a break from drawing for a while because i was kind of like frustrated so i kind of just went on my phone chill literally blowing a fan to my face because i was just kind of done in that moment but after a while i started drawing again and i managed to draw her fingers and not make it look like sausages or that she has a disfigured
weird hat. In the photos that I have of her, her earrings are very dangly and they're very nice. And I know too from spending time with her that she loves dangly earrings and just feeling all pretty. So I knew that I had to draw some nice dangly earrings for her. At first I had her earrings as these kind of like wispy, three dangly pieces just intertwining like that, but it just didn't feel right. So I changed it to an earring style that was similar to the one that she was wearing in the photo that I was using as reference. But that didn't really feel right either. I changed that to a teardrop kind of shape that matched the shape of the peacock feathers. And I felt like the shape composition just felt right because it just looked nice to have shapes matching shapes so that it's not just a whole bunch of different shapes. So after her face and hair were pretty much done, I started working on her upper body. I saw a post a while ago about how most artists don't draw the trap muscles here. They just draw the neck going straight down and then like this, like an L shape. And I felt really called out because I did that and the post was supposed to call artists out for not drawing trap muscles. So they were successful in calling me out because I don't draw those muscles. So when I was drawing, you know, I made sure to draw those muscles. And for Ina's top, I was kind of stuck. I didn't really know what kind of top would fit the general atmosphere of the drawing slash painting. But then it occurred to me that I have photos of her prom and the top of her prom dress is really elegant and very well suited for this drawing. So I used the photo from her prom and copied the top of it. And after I was finished the outline, I called Ina because I was so excited for her to see this drawing and especially because I knew that she would be excited to know that I was drawing her because she's been literally waiting for three years so this is the call can you hear me yeah okay you know how I make art videos yeah okay I kind of drew you <gasps> okay I'm not done though I just did the outline what are you drawing I can't tell you I fixed the outline more after I called her though because I felt like the face was just too oblong so I trimmed it down a little. I also changed her hair. It used to just be one piece of hair going from here to here and just dangling like that but after looking at her prom photo, I felt like it looked a lot neater to have her hair pinned to the side a little. So the outline went from this to this. After I was done the outline, I lightened the lines to prepare for coloring. I also used a smaller eraser for smaller areas to make sure that the lines were light enough. Okay, the next couple parts are honestly gonna sound like a beauty tutorial. And why not make it sound like a beauty tutorial? Because beauty and drawing actually have a lot in common. So we start with a light layer of foundation, keeping it very, very light and coloring all parts of her skin. And then next, using a darker shade, shading in areas such as under her chin, on her collarbone, the area under her arm, and just creating a round kind of structure and making her arm round in general and also giving her face dimension. I also made sure to shade in the spaces between her fingers so that it looked realistic. Next, we used an even darker color than that to slightly contour her face and also make the area under her chin even darker to create a deeper dimension. Also, as I was coloring her skin in, I used an eraser from time to time to lighten because I would occasionally go a little bit too dark. And while you're coloring the skin, you have to make sure that you you don't go too dark with your dark colors. It's a lot easier to take away from light colors than it is from dark colors, so just be very careful with dark colors. And after her skin was colored in, this is what she looks like. So next, I work on the eyes. And for her eyes, I'm using a darker shade of brown than I did on her skin for her eyeshadow and really making sure that I'm using as much precision as I can because one wrong line could just throw off her eyes completely. Okay, I'm gonna stop being a beauty guru because it's kind of tiring to just kind of like think like that and talk like that and I'm not a beauty guru, I'm an artist in a different way. Anyways, yeah, for her eyes, I have to be really, really careful. And I don't know how many other people do this, so far, I only know one guy who does this, but when I'm drawing tiny little details like I was with her eyes, I would lean in like really, really close and I would also hold my breath because I was just so scared of making a mistake that I felt like even the smallest breath 
mouth could just set off her entire face and make me make a mistake. After the eyes were done, I worked on the eyebrows. And the whole time while I was working on the eyebrows, I was thinking, sisters, not twins. That's how you should draw your eyebrows. Whether it be on a canvas or paper or on your face. Also, another thing that I was thinking about was that I'm better at drawing eyebrows and just doing makeup overall on a piece of paper rather than I am on my own face. And I think that's just kind of sad. So... Oh, and I thought that I was recording while I was doing her eyebrows, but apparently I wasn't, so I just don't have a clip of me doing her eyebrows. But after her eyebrows, I put some mascara on her, and I felt like my black pencil crown was just too thick to make those fine little details. So I sharpened my pencil to be super, super sharp, and then I worked on her lashes. And once again, I was holding my breath and just leaning super close. Because of her lashes, I felt like if I made a mistake, she would end up looking like that meme of like that white-faced pale animated guy with like the long lashes. I don't know what he's called and I don't know where he's from but if I do find a picture of him I'll put him here. And then after her eyelashes were done I added a little bit of blush to her cheeks using a light reddish kind of color. I felt like using a pink would be too cute in this picture so red is just the way to go but not like super red just a little tinge of red. And with blush whether you're painting it, coloring it on a piece of paper or doing it on your own face be careful of where you put it because where you put it will alter the face shape and that's something that I learned from beauty gurus. So I'm not a complete mess when it comes to makeup, but I still have much to go. I used a little bit of pink on her inner eyes to make the drawing look more realistic because if you actually look at someone's eyes, you can see that there's like a pink part in their eyes and like I'm not gonna poke my eyes to show you, but like, you know. I also used a little bit of pink on the area next to her nose over here because pretty much everyone has a little bit of red lips here. It's just a human thing. After adding those details, I worked on her lips and for a while I was kind of torn on what color her lipstick should be but then I thought of another beauty tip that I learned a long time ago. It's that if you make your lipstick the same color as your blush, it looks a lot more natural. So that's what I did. I used the same color as I did on her cheeks on her lips and it ended up looking really good. So after her makeup was fully done, it was time to do her hair. And for her hair, I started with a light brown color as a foundation and then I started shading her hair in with a darker brown color. That was the same color that I used for her eyebrows and just making sure to draw darker lines and lighter lines to give texture in her hair. After her hair was done, I worked on the headpiece that I designed for her. And just like I did with the skin and her hair, I first used a light coating as a base and then I started shading in to make it look realistic and give it dimension and in this case I used a pencil again because I felt like the pencil gray was just the perfect gray and I was too lazy to find the perfect gray in my pencil crayon box so I just used the pencil. <laughs> So the next little bit of coloring and shading that I did was not film. My phone was dying and I didn't realize my phone was dying so then it just didn't film. So but this is what it ended up looking like. So after that was done, I worked on her top again with all the other coloring that I've done so far. First a light layer and then I started shading in details, making the top a little darker and drawing in these lines that go like this across her chest because that was the way that her prom dress was that I just forgot to add when I was doing the outline. And I made sure to make the top a little darker than the area lower than her chest so that I could give her chest dimension and give her a little clean because honestly I think I think she needs a little help there. And with that, the pencil coloring is done and this is what it looks like. So I made a mistake. I started with the brown instead of the blue and I realized that and I was like, oh shoot! So then I just left it like that and I started working on the, the middle dark blue part of the peacock feather all around the other feathers and just left that one bad feather like that because I was already on planning on kind of smudging the end feathers closest to her ears anyways so it wasn't that big of a deal I guess so I just moved on and painted the other parts correctly. So after the dark blue part was dry I worked on the light blue part and then 
the gluing part after that and just basically worked from the inside outwards. And then I started using a red brown kind of color making the peacock kind of shape. And the overall vibe I was kind of going with these peacock feathers was a very abstract kind of wishy-washy not super detailed kind of vibe because I didn't want it to be super detailed because the attention should be on her face rather than the peacock feathers. The peacock feathers are supposed to just add to her not be the attention rather than her beautiful face. So that's why I was kind of just really like rough with my colors and just using very rough brush strokes and not really concerning myself with details. I didn't want it to just be like a brown blob though. It still had to have some details. So after the first layer of brown was dry, I used a darker brown to create some texture and then afterwards I mixed all the colors that I used to paint the peacock feathers and mixed it into the two peacock feathers that were closest to her ears and then just dry Drag that paint down to create this kind of like flowy, like, poof, like goddess type of feeling and just make her look like really badass and cool. And then after it dried, I signed it and then I was done. Also, I would have sprayed the drawing slash painting, but it's been raining the past couple days and even though it's not raining now, the ground is still wet from raining last night and this morning, so it's not a good idea to be spraying something outside. After I was done, I messaged Ina telling her that I was done and then she called me out of excitement and this is her reaction. Okay. Ah! Okay, but do you know why I picked uh, peacock feathers though? Why? Okay, you know that like sound that you kept making and I told you like it sounded like a peacock? Which one? It was like that ah, <laughs> kind of sound. Ah, ah. No, <laughs> it's like you can't do it on purpose. Like you just do it. And then I was like, bro, you sound like a peacock. So I was like, what if I paint <laughs> peacock? How'd you like it? <laughs> So I have a confession. So when we were calling the first time after I finished only the outline, she asked me if I made her really pretty and I said yes. She was scared that I would use one of her ugly photos and make her into one of those funny stickers that you send on WeChat. And since she mentioned that, I decided to draw one of her ugly pictures. So here you go. Please don't kill me, you know. Like pretty though? Yeah, you look so pretty. <laughs> okay, that's all I need to You think I'd make you ugly? I think you'll draw like those kind of really ugly photos. I will become a bouncing ball. <laughs> 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 That's kind of tempting now that you suggested though. I didn't even think about it. No, no.